Lisa Shaw was 44 years old when she died three weeks after having her first AstraZeneca vaccination. The award-winning BBC Radio presenter's family say she was treated for blood clots days after her first jab. A side effect, expert stress, is extremely rare. Official figures from the regulator, the MHRA, up to the end of last month show there were 399 cases of blood clots and 71 deaths after more than 46 million doses of the vaccine. And Public Health England say the vaccination programme has so far prevented an estimated 27,000 deaths in England alone. But Felice's husband, Gareth, is calling for everyone to be given a choice about which vaccine they have. I've been talking to him in his first interview since Lisa's death, and he told me how she was feeling about getting her first jab at the end of April. No, I think she, she, she was quite positive and excited about it. She was certainly positive about the idea of things so-called going back to normal and being able to give a, a mum a hug and, and, and things like that. She was very... A mum used to joke that Lisa followed the rules very, very closely. Um, you know, she was, you know, she was a bit of a stickler, um, and she didn't, she didn't hug her mum and things like that. And like I say, I think she was looking forward to the idea of getting a vaccine, so those things could come back, hugging her nieces and nephews and sisters and things like that. You know. When did Lisa start to feel unwell? Um, Lisa had the jab on a Thursday and it was the following Friday when she started to experience headaches. Um, it was a Friday night and I think she kind of brushed it off and thought, well, I, you know, we've had a glass of wine and stuff like that and didn't really think anything of it. But the, the, the Saturday and the Sunday after that was when she started to be a little bit more concerned that she had these headaches and she actually called work to say that I'd, I'm not feeling great. I don't know that I'll be able to come in on, mon on the Monday. When paracetamol and ibuprofen and codeine didn't help ease the pain of those headaches, it was a blood test that showed not everything was as it should be. That's right. And you got a call late at night to say an ambulance was being sent to your house to take Lisa to hospital. Yeah. What did you and Lisa think was going on then? I had no idea. The paramedic that came to the door kind of suggested that there was a problem with something in her blood. I can't remember. It was, like I say, it was, it was probably getting on for quarter to one in the morning. And in, I can't remember whether he said it was something to do with the platelets or not. Um, but Lisa was, had got up and got dressed and, it, you know, walked from the front door and got and sat down in the ambulance. Um, one of the most heartbreaking things about that episode was the the fact that she went into the ambulance not really knowing what was going on, not really understanding this severity of things. And one of Lisa's sisters was at our house because I thought I might be able to go to the hospital with her mm. and, she, and she was going to sit with our son. Um, and Lisa didn't, Lisa didn't give her sister a hug because she thought that was, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. And then that was the last time she saw her sister like that. What did doctors say was wrong with Lisa? The first doctor that I spoke to, I think she was a haematologist in the RVI. That's the Royal Victoria Infirmary in, in Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah, the, the first person I spoke to said, without any question, we're treating Lisa for blood clots. Uh, causes a complication as a result of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccination. And how did you react to that? Um, I, I think at that time you're kind of like, right, well, put aside what 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 is going on, what the reasons for it. We just need to do what the doctors are telling us to do and 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 get through. You know, you know, work out. You know, initially the, the treatments that they did to Lisa, where they try to replace the the platelets in her blood and things like that, they seem to be progressing quite well. Mm. Um, so yeah, we were both quite positive, quite matter of fact. It's yeah, you know, well yeah, we just 
this is what's happening, but I think one of the specialists said um, when when people come in and they get and, and, and we carry out the treatments that we're doing, they get better, not worse. So we, like I say, we were quite positive. We were quite reassured by that. When did things begin to change, though? Yeah, so Lisa was transferred, as I say, from in, in, into the RVI, and it was the Thursday into the Friday, and, and these, this platelet work was going on, and um, I went to visit Lisa on the Sunday afternoon at the visiting time in, in the RVI, and um, on the Sunday afternoon, probably two, three, four o'clock in the afternoon, Lisa started to, um, she wasn't able to pick words up, so she got confused with certain things. I asked her what she'd had for a lunch and things like that, and she was trying to remind me of a few things for later on but when I went home for my son, and she couldn't, f it sticks in my head, the word that she couldn't find was goggles. She wanted, she wanted me to remember to take our son's goggles to swim in, and she couldn't find the word, and her head was hurting a lot. And I, I spoke to one of the doctors, and, um, and then it all started to get a little bit scary. Surgeons and lots of people milling around, they did a CT scan, and um, if I recall, I think that's when they discovered a bleed. On and, her brain? On her brain. Obviously they already knew there was clots, but then there was this bleed on the brain, and um, then it all started, like I say, it started to kind of you know, go very, very fast. Um, they transferred her into the high dependency unit. She was in a lot of pain in her head. Um, I was able to go in and see her in the high dependency unit when she was settled. And this was about one fifteen in the morning or something like that on the Monday morning. And um, I spoke to her. She told me to go home and see our son because it was late. She said, go and get some rest go and see him and um, she said I'm tired and I gave her a kiss and then I never spoke to her again. As a result of your wife's death what do you want to see happen now? The, the scary thing for me is that the vaccines are being given to people and have been given to people and we were aware earlier in the year that and we are aware that these vaccines come with certain risks. Um, but for whatever reason, we don't know who these adverse reactions are going to appear in. It's a, it's a lottery. And it, it, that, that thought's quite scary that, you know, people are getting these jabs and, and we don't know whether it's going to have an, a, a, a bad reaction or not. And the guys in the hospital that were treating Lisa, that, as I say, they, di they didn't really know what they were facing. They didn't know how to treat it. And for me, in a situation like that, you know, and I say this, and, I'm, and, I, and as I'm, I'm absolutely not an anti-vaxxer, but I say this and I think, while we don't know this information, while we don't know how to treat people, while we don't know who it's going to affect, maybe the, the answer is to, 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 to give people the alternative. There are alternative vaccines available. Does, does AstraZeneca so, so you're get... you're not saying pause the AstraZeneca rollout, you're saying give people a choice? Um, if there's a choice available, mm. yeah. I, I can understand it. You know, it, it's it's not as if we don't have other vaccines available to us. We do. Uh, you know, so while there is this cloud over AZ, then maybe put it on ice and say, look, we're going to look into giving people other the other jab. Um, we have a statement here from the regulator, which is the uh, MHRA, and they say, we are deeply saddened to hear about the death of Miss Shaw and our thoughts are with her family. Over 81 million doses of vaccines against COVID-19 have now been administered in the UK, saving thousands of lives through the biggest vaccination programme that's ever taken place in this country. 
no effective medicine or vaccine is without risk. And our advice remains that the benefits of the astrogen